Happy New Year, everyone. Um, <clears throat> hey. <laughs> so, right before all the New Year and Christmas vacation and all that, um, it's kind of an unexpected Christmas vacation, but whatever, I'll take it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I was having some real problems uh, with this. And um, I just wanted to cut out as much as possible. And over the vacation, I hardly touched a computer. I did, did a little bit of typing, but I did uh, I don't know, what I call hunt and peck style typing, where you just kind of... <laughs> You type as though you have a wrist brace on. It's not very fast, but for anything fast, I used a, a you know a proper keyboard, uh, an ergonomic keyboard. But I figured out a bunch of stuff during that period of non-computing, which uh, jibes with what I had been speculating for a while that the the time away from computers and from phones and from the, these devices that distract us is uh, time that needs to be cultivated and protected and I forgot my coffee Whew. what time is it okay oh, we're okay we're fine we can do this everyone just everyone just just be cool all right <laughs> uh, <laughs> <coughs> right so cuff keyboards it, yeah figured out a bunch of stuff I don't have a list so I apologize it's gonna be a little bit haphazard uh, which is just what all of these are but uh, Signum uh, for, first of all I, I got my bits for pointing devices I got the the two axis joystick and messed around with the uh, software or firmware I guess for uh, for controlling the stick um, from controlling the mouse with a pointing stick. So I do have a track point and uh, module, and technically they are apparently harvest able, harvestable um, from other ThinkPad replacement or knockoff keyboards. But I don't know about the quality, and that's not really something that can scale properly. So I'm not really pursuing that. Um, If I make, I realized this over the vacation, if, if I make something that works for me and no one else, then it's, it's hard to improve it and it's hard to, you know, tell other people, oh, sorry, you know, uh, I can't really do that for you because it's too hard and finicky. Uh, or, sure, it's easy, here's 12 pages of stuff you have to figure out just in order to get it. <clears throat> and make sure you buy the right part and you know the eBay seller changes and whatever your links are bad so I just want something that's scalable uh, something that can work for lots of people I realized that was something that I was doing um, you know if I wasn't doing this for other people I would be customizing things to my liking and then just calling it like I'd be like done good luck everyone <laughs> uh, but I, I don't do that and that's part of me giving, giving back, I guess. Uh, I also want to progress keyboards just in general. I want all of this stuff to be open. I want all this stuff to be, I want people to think about this stuff. Um, <clears throat> I, I say open. I have not gone open source yet. I, I still do, well, I don't even know if I can say I've gone open source. I have an individual product. All of my ideas <laughs> are out. I, I publish all that. I have a I have live streams that I show you how to design PCBs exactly like this. You know, you can do it yourself if you're willing to put in the work for it. I just don't want to take the I guess hundreds thousands might be a reach, but hundreds of hours um spent designing and working on and improving these things easily thousands if you if you count the uh, the layout um, tweaking the layout and seeing what's comfortable and what works well and getting rid of things that don't work easily but all that research like I I, I, I do want to be paid for that I, I want that time to be valuable to me as well 
because when it's not valuable to me, then it's just like, why am I even doing this? What's the point? You know, um, the good vibes and the feels of people being like, hey, thank you for doing this. It's that's great. It's cool, and I love it, and I love that I can be part of that and contribute to that. And know that like. Reduce suffering. I'm sorry. Reduce unnecessary suffering. Like, for mankind. Reduce unnecessary suffering. Ameliorate suffering. Ameliorate unnecessary suffering, I guess is the correct uh, phrase. If we're going to borrow from my company name. <laughs> company name. I don't know what to name my company since I, I'm into so many things. But I realized that throughout whatever I'm doing, I'm, I'm always trying to improve. So the, the company is Fletcher Amelioration, which is just uh, just improvement. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I mean, that that's the goal is to reduce unnecessary suffering for everyone. And when I think about that uh, in regards to, oh man, vents right on the mic. I don't know if you could be, bleh, I don't know if you could hear any of this. <laughs> okay, well, we'll see. Um, the idea that my keyboards are all over the world helping people have less, you know, kinks in their bodies and less pain is really humbling. I'm very... proud, uh, honored to be to be part of that to be helping people literally all over the world uh, I don't know quite why that particularly is, only because the like, most of my sales I think, are overseas <laughs> uh, I'm very big in Sweden and Germany I don't know why but I'm not complaining <laughs> it's, it's good um all right, so, I mean, that's like why I'm doing it. So I want to be able to integrate more things and I want it to be stuff that's scalable. I don't want it to be stuff that's, you know, crazy hard to do. Uh, I don't want it to be um, something that's so time consuming that I can only do, you know, one custom a week or two customs a week. Um, and fiddling with software and then working on supply lines. Gosh, supply lines are so weird. I had no idea, um, but I, I want to have standard parts, or at least as close to standardized as possible, and that means I have to make exceptions for integrations and stuff like that. Um, I'm also not that great with firmware, so, well, I say that, but I haven't really <clears throat> dived into QMK yet. Um, I think adding some analog inputs to register as mouse movements would be very valuable. And I think that would be a valuable addition to QMK. Right now it takes a, it can do a pass through or translation, I guess, for PS2 inputs. Maybe the correct method is to write firmware for the joystick so that it uh, replicates PS2 inputs. Uh, but then you're still stuck with, um, you know, Pro Micro is kind of the standard, and the Pro Micro does not have sufficient inputs to add all this extra stuff to it, which means you're designing a board, you're putting a chip on the board, you're pre, uh, you know, what is it, solder wiping, making a solder mask, and that just adds cost to the PCB, which I don't really feel is entirely necessary. Uh, I like options, I like obviously. It's options for different people. So I like that you can run a Teensy or, or a, a Pro Micro or a Ultra, what is it, Ultra Micro or Elite C, the, the USB-C type Pro Micro. I think it's it's an industry, I guess, standard at this point. <clears throat> at least that footprint is, so to maintain it is uh, probably a good thing. Um, the yeah, for a micro.
That's right. Uh, so you would have to either have a teensy or you run it on its own. And this is my, my solution, which might not be a great solution, but run it on its own uh, separate controller. Uh, and that was kind of the idea for Signum Dev anyways, having that, uh, that additional Arduino uh, Nano <clears throat> to drive the OLED and read the, um, the step, what is it, the, uh, the rotary encoder. And it was just kind of its own separate unit, but it could interface with the keyboard because uh, it had the same voltage, it was on the same power. Um, so the idea of having a separate joystick that's mounted to the keyboard that is on a separate controller, which at this point means you would have a separate device plug, a separate cable plugged into it somewhere. Um, <clears throat> unless, here's another weird idea I had, unless you do the same kind of integration that I did on, uh, for activating keys with that nano where you're just driving a um, driving a transistor that shorts across the switch so you're like sharing a switch with the separate controller and then you use that separate controller to activate a switch for mouse control but QMK doesn't have variable inputs I mean like you can't send it a uh, send it a, a value and have it translate that into a value that same value of mouse movement so you would get like mouse left mouse up mouse down which uh, would work for like a joystick or what is it a five-way push button switch where you have like you know the old arcade style joystick where you've got up down left and right uh, <clears throat> but it's pointless for a proper two-axis joystick where you actually have the ability to move it a little bit and move it more and then move it all the way to one side and then to angle it up so you have multiple movements involved unless you did some kind of translation for that movement uh, for something like um, easy ABR that has mouse movements tied to uh, repetition so if you tap the key three times you get more sensitivity or two times you get more sensitivity the more times you tap the key, you get three levels of uh, sensitivity for mouse movement. Something like that would be pretty easy to fire that key, you know, three times. <clears throat> and then hold it until you release the joystick uh, based on how far you're tilting the joystick. That would be kind of interesting. Uh, but then it would need easy AVR and then people wouldn't have their QMK option. So it's a lot of stuff to balance, uh, but the point is I want to get a pointing device that is utilitous. Um, by the way, there's no comparison uh, for the two-axis joystick, at, at least as far as the hardware stands and the current firmware stands, to get it to be as useful as the track point, but, uh, or to get as accurate, but that might just be my own personal preferences because I prefer the track points. Uh, here at Unicomp, we've got a lot of customers that get the new uh, Endura Pros with the pointing sticks. And the pointing stick is a joystick style pointing stick. It is not like the original um, strain gauge. So they do not feel at all alike. And to me, I can't even, I can barely use the, uh, the, the pointing stick joystick style one, the new model. Um, <clears throat> But there's a bunch of people that, I mean, they don't have a, I'm in the minority. People use these things. And I'm like, this is like hot garbage. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, this works fine. Oh, I can click stuff. That's cool. And I'm like, no, it has to be faster and more accurate, more precise. It's just, I mean, it, it works fine for them. So, like, who am I to complain? Um, so maybe, I don't know, maybe the two-axis joystick will work. It's, uh, it's going to be based off of the, it will be added somehow integrated into the Signum Dev as an optional feature <coughs> for you to put in there and play around with, just have some, some integrated mouse controls. Uh, I also got the dactyl running. With those SA keycaps on the dactyl, it is, uh, or no, no, assembled, I haven't got it running yet. 
uh, but I have definitely been playing around with it with those keycaps on it. It feels very comfortable. It is a, little, it is a bit odd. Um, the pinky row might need elevated keycaps, so you might need like OEM on the inside and then SA on the outside or something on that pinky. Um, So it feels odd, it feels pretty good though when you kind of get going, uh, but I'm suspicious that a flat board that's tented in the middle so that it just kind of lifts up in the middle is going to be more comfortable. So we'll see. I'm getting into 3D printing so we might be printing bases for these, uh, we'll figure that out. I'll think of more stuff and talk to you all later.